Cleveland's own Fox 8 News. So much devastation out there. There really, really is. There really truly is. A lot of people still without power today. We have a little bird's eye view of the widespread damage across Northeast Ohio. Not only did Sky Fox fly over downed power lines that left tens of thousands in the dark, we also had Drone Fox up to get a little better perspective as well. They showed us the wind damage in Strongsville, including the roof blown off this home on Raccoon Road. A lot of trees down almost every single yard along Woodacre Trail in Geauga County. Yeah, so these twisting winds, heavy rains inundated the area. Flash floods and downed power lines closed many, many streets. Fox 8 Stacey Fry begins our live team coverage out west right now in Lorraine County. Stace, good morning again. Good morning. Yeah, we're in LaGrange where there was heavy damage to some businesses just off Town Square. There are people collecting literally pieces of the roof from the hardware store across the street. That all peeled back around 5.30, 6 o'clock uh, when we were... I was comfortably sitting at home watching all those warnings on TV. So it was good to know that uh, we had our guys keeping an eye, guys and girls keeping an eye out for us. But this was the result of it. A lot of people wondering, and we even got some video of somebody uh, shooting what looked like a funnel cloud forming in Erie County. This was the kind of damage the storm caused. Just a large chunk of that roof peeling off at the hardware store. Uh, people have been stopping by here all morning to tell me about damage at their homes, uh, along their streets. There are power poles sheared in half about a mile away on 301 but right under the roof here at this hardware store in his apartment and the tenant was in there last night when the storm swept through well i got up there and uh seen that there was tornado warnings till seven o'clock and uh i started seeing spark sparks and i could hear hear the roof get tore off the building what'd you do what could i do i'm going outside yeah, he stayed in when we were warning him to, and then what choice do you have? This is actually the guy right here picking up the roof that was most recently on top of his apartment in the back of this hardware store. But if you take a look at the hardware store, people are coming and going. They've got a generator on, and uh, so they're trying to keep a business as usual as much as they can. Where the damage is, is in the back where they also rent a lot of equipment, so that's where it's stored in the back there. Uh, so uh, obviously they're assessing damage as they go. Roofing company luckily was able to come out here and throw that big tarp on top to try and reduce water damage as much as they could. But that's what people are dealing with out here. Nobody hurt, that's excellent Amen. news. But a lot of cleaning up, picking up, sweeping up, it's gonna be a big job. Thank you, Stace, appreciate it. So sure. the aftermath of the storm has caused a big problem now for people in Summit County. Right. Police are warning some residents just not to even leave their homes. Jessica Dill's been there this morning, continuing our team coverage from Bainbridge. Jess, good morning. Good morning, it's like it doesn't stop raining. Every time it gets a little bit better, it starts to pour again. Take a look behind me, I'm on Wood Acre Trail. This is just where trees toppled down all over. I don't know if you can tell, but that big darkness back there, just massive tree past massive tree that has fallen down here in Geauga County. The Sheriff's Office told me this morning there is just utter devastation. They were waiting, of course, in daylight to see exactly how bad the damage is, but they've been out there working to get the the power back on because so many people are without power in this area, thousands in Geauga County. I also want to take you to Twinsburg. We have a massive down power line in Twinsburg on Liberty Road. That road is closed between Glenwood and Post Roads. People are being told to stay in the neighborhood there and the city is reminding people that even being near a live power line like that can kill you. We also have video from North Royalton. I'll show you some of that. North Royalton was another area that was hit hard. We talked to people out there. A lot of damage there on Drake Road as well people with trees going down but the number one thing here is that you need to if you see these cones up if you see these roadblocks you have to stay away from them because they're extremely dangerous and let me get we just talked to a neighbor too that lived on the road here he described the madness that was yesterday so we got in the house it started to rain pretty hard and then soon after that there was lots of loud noises it sounded like hail but it may have been branches falling down and then the house shook and we, we got to the basement and then when it quietened down, we came up and we saw the trees down and uh, just a mess. 
Raymond lives on the road here where all these trees are down. It's interesting as I've been talking to all the neighbors here today, they say that they didn't even know that this is what these neighbors' houses look like because these trees were so big and all of them just coming down. Fortunately, no reports of any injuries on this neighborhood so far. Hopefully that stays true as we go through here and as long as everybody just heeds the warning and not to go near any down power lines or anything like that. Just That's incredible to see how massive those, those trees, trees are so huge and how they were just ripped right out of the ground. So many of them there. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've done so much storm coverage where it's, oh, one tree is over, but mm -hmm. this is honestly every little bit that you walk, there's another massive tree down. It's, it's ridiculous. Can we there. hear the chainsaws yeah, going, that's for sure. Already. Jess, yeah. thank you, live from Bainbridge this morning. And we will have live updates and the latest coverage as our team coverage continues this morning in the aftermath of those severe storms that rolled through yesterday and last night. So stay with Fox 8 on air and online, fox8.com. Plus, make sure you have the app on your phone yes. as well. Uh, we're going to check in with Scott Sable. Mm -hmm. He has the latest on our forecast. So, hello there. Hey, guys. Good morning, morning, everybody. Yeah, the uh, conditions are getting much colder and they are drying out uh, pretty quick now. We're not going to get a whole lot of sun here, at least early on today. Again, there's the cloud deck. There was the rain this morning and the thunder and now we're starting to see the ceiling improving here, meaning the base of the cloud deck is starting to lift north. All right, no, look at this. Probably the best picture we've seen so far, and this was damage in Twinsburg. Again, you can look at the huge tree going right through that garage roof. Again, no confirmed reports of any tornadoes. More than likely, and again, we'll know more here in another day or two from the National Weather Service, but more than likely, with the majority of the damage, it was straight line winds. Winds of 80 to 100 miles an hour, a microburst. In other words, you get a burst of cold air that can you know that can come right out of the cloud literally within just a few moments <clears throat> and uh, the winds can go from 15 to 20 to 90 miles an hour in a short period of time a lot can happen in november it's our second severe weather season not all that unusual to get severe weather in november um, but certainly something this widespread hasn't happened in a while sure my yeah. goodness it was rough scott and some of the uh, weather spotters are going out today national weather service national weather service yeah what they do they go out and they survey damage they kind of reverse engineer what happens so they look at damage if it's a downburst you'll see the, 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 the pattern of debris kind of go down and around, literally right. like air coming like this. If it's a tornado, then they'll notice a swirl. And so that's why they need to get a general idea. I mean, I know it's six to one half dozen of the other, right? Damage is damage. True. But, uh, but, but they'll get a better idea, especially um, uh, with a few of the, the harder hit areas here. It might take them a day or two because it was fairly widespread. So again, we'll know more and relay that information to you when we get it from the National Weather Service. All right, from that awful story to this yesterday, at least 26 people are dead after this gunman opened fire in a small town Texas church. Hard to believe a church would be mm -hmm. the scene of something like that. But this morning, that suspect is dead. Mm -hmm. The town just in shock. Caroline Shively is there with an update for us. New information in the case this morning. Sheriff Joe Tackett tells us he still knows of no motive, but he believes the mother-in-law and father-in-law of the gunman attended First Baptist Church. Investigators are piecing together what's now the deadliest shooting in modern Texas history. More than two dozen people were killed when a gunman dressed in tactical gear stormed the church. A pregnant woman, some children, and the pastor's 14-year-old daughter are among the victims. We're just going to try to do our best to, to comfort and, and minister how we can. We've lost some great friends today, um, and we had some really great friends injured. Governor Greg Abbott attended a spontaneous vigil Sunday night, helping to light candles and comfort locals. Some mourners had been in the area when shots rang out Sunday morning. I told my wife to call Wilson County because that was gunshots and it was in the neighborhood. It was too close. The shooter is 26-year-old Devin Patrick Kelly. He's a former Air Force serviceman, court-martialed a few years ago for assault on his spouse and their child. President Trump acknowledged the airman's history, framing the shooting as a mental health problem, not what he called a gun situation. Very deranged individual, had a lot of problems over a long period of time. This is a mental health problem at the highest level. Kelly was confronted by an armed man when he exited the church. That man chased him down. Kelly was later found dead of a gunshot wound to his head in his car. Police believe it was self-inflicted. In Sutherland Springs, Texas, I'm Caroline Shively, Fox News. Caroline, thank you for the latest on that. Cleveland police investigating a homicide after a shooting turned deadly. We're told that two people were shot on Fidelity Avenue near West 117th Street last night. Police say a 32-year-old man was shot in the stomach and died. We do not have any word on the other victim. In Kirtland, police are investigating a possible homicide. Somebody found a body in Kirtland Park on East 49th and South Marginal Road. This was in the city of Cleveland on Sunday morning. Investigators say the victim died from a gunshot wound to the head. 
So far, the Cuyahoga County coroner has not released that man's identity. Well, a Cleveland family's dog is in the city kennel this morning after it killed a two-week-old baby. Cleveland police say that the four-year-old German Shepherd attacked the girl Friday night after it got loose from the kitchen at the home on Carrington Avenue. There's, this is near West 130th Street. The little baby suffered head trauma and was taken to the hospital where she died. So far, no charges have been filed, but homicide detectives are investigating, which, of course, is protocol in the deaths of children. Just so sad, two-week-old baby. Oh, my goodness. Well, new information now coming up on the deadly Walmart shooting. And we'll find out what's happening today and why the suspect in this case could be facing even more charges. Cameras, as we know, are everywhere these days, but should they be inside high school bathrooms? One school just hmm. installed them, and we're going to see if you agree with this decision with today's morning's download. Yeah, temperatures have dropped now. We're in the mid-40s. Rain is gone. Uh, the uh, bigger question now, will we see any breaks of sunshine? We'll talk more about that. Also, look back at the severe weather from yesterday and look at see how much of a rarity it is to get this type of severe weather in November and the eight-day when we come back. Controversy after a high school installs cameras in school bathrooms. Yes, yeah, so a Windsor Charter Academy in Colorado says that it installed the cameras to protect students and secure the building. They're only using them in the high school bathrooms where all the stalls are from floor to ceiling. But parents say it violates the privacy of students, especially when they're changing in the bathrooms for okay. after school activities. The school says only administration and technology staff have access to the footage and it will only be accessed if there is a need. So if there's a fight or something like that that would happen or someone's in mm -hmm. the building that shouldn't be, then they can access well, those Smoking cameras. in the boys room or whatever right. they're doing. You know. I, I, I can see it. However, I think the, the alternative is, do you want to pay more in taxes to have an extra staff member be there because of the, 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 the schools are so budget strapped as it sure. is with cuts and, and personnel. They don't have somebody who can monitor the bathroom. So this is a way to get around that. And as long as it's floor to, st floor to ceiling on the stalls, Maybe you add one more that's more of like a changing yeah, because thing, you know. Right. If they know right. that the cameras are in there, then they should know not to change. Maybe there's a locker room sure. they there can officially change yeah. and they know the cameras are there. Mm -hmm. If they still choose to do that, then, you know, that's that's a different issue. But otherwise, there's so much but, legally, you know, a lot of stuff that happens. You, yeah. you, you can't prove something happens. If, if there's an incident that takes place, you have no proof because you know, it, it happens in the in bathrooms. A bathroom. yeah. and, and the kids would go there because they know there's no cameras mm -hmm. so they can. Sure. Know, so it's, it's so sad that we're even talking. You I know, agree. We no. all grew up, and when we were in school, that was never an issue. Yeah. No. It didn't need to be, and now, uh, sadly, it is. Yeah, yeah it's uh, tough. Tasha says this is needed. This is where a lot of fights take place. Children are being bullied. Mm -hmm. As long as you cannot see in the stall, you know, then go for it. Marcus says there is no need for this, and we wouldn't be okay with this at our job or local gym. No, I mean, I, I guess if you were aware, maybe that that there were cameras at your local gym in the locker room, but I don't s really see that happening because that's, you know, a yep. business where yep. you do go to change. And anyway, Teresa says, I unfortunately hate to say with these kids getting so brutally attacked in the bathrooms, I can help, I can't help rather, but agree that they need these cameras as long as they can show that they don't show anything behind the stalls or open urinals in the men's room, then I think it is a risk that we have to take. At this point, it's kind of like the school's hands are tied. What else can you do? Uh, Amanda writes on our Fox 8 Facebook page, I don't think cameras, but maybe recording devices to hear what goes on in the bathroom. Mm. I think a camera will just open up a door to lawsuits. Mark says women's security guards should monitor women's restrooms and men's security guards should monitor men's restrooms. As you said, tax dollars then paying great. for. If you, can, if you can pay for it, you have somebody right. to do it. Yeah, great. Uh, Jamie says as long as they can't see into the area the personal business is being handled, I say heck yeah. Uh, too many issues with fighting and drugs in these spaces without them being monitored. It's for their safety. So we want to know what you think. Is it okay for schools to install cameras in bathrooms? There's a great article. We have it posted. Uh, 64% of you do say no. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not for this. Uh, great article though on why the school's you know thinking about doing it and what have you, but I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm not necessarily stuff. for it, Sure. Mm -hmm. but I see the need for it. I, I see, yeah. I can see, where I can you see both have. sides. I mean, there's no Me privacy too. anyway. It doesn't matter where you are. Right. There's no privacy anymore. <laughs> doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. Especially for students. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. With too many the cell legal, phones. Too many the, legal issues mm -hmm, going on. Mm -hmm. Yep. So and listen, they're taking, they're taking their cell phones into the bathroom anyway. Yeah. So there's cameras in the bathroom things. at every minute yeah. of the day. That's true.
Not that they're recording stuff necessarily, but well, you who's, don't to know. Say that, who's to they say they couldn't? Access to or won't. Yeah. All right, thank you, Christy. You're welcome. Thank Appreciate you. your comments. Yeah, all right. Let's Sticking with Scott, yeah. Hey, Scott, how are you? What's happening, guys? Morning, morning, everybody. Yeah, the uh, severe weather yesterday was rough. Let's check it out, and we'll look back uh, on um, and look ahead at the damage. And now that the sun's up, we're getting a really good idea of what the damage, uh, where it began and, and where it ended. Pretty much North Royalton, Strongsville, uh, all the way east through Brecksville, uh, Twinsburg, Solon, and all points in between. Uh, we had more than likely, and again, not confirmed by the Weather Service, but more than likely it was some sort of microburst. We'll explain what that is in a few moments. But look, these winds are strong enough to drop significant trees. I mean, some of the diameter on some of these trees were more than a foot, foot and a half. All right, what happened yesterday is that the Weather Service and all of us here at Fox 8, we look at the radar, and what we do is we look to see if there's any twists on the radar. And you can see these orange and red little striations. There's some of the twists embedded within the overall cluster of rain. You strip away the actual radar and you just look at the wind field. And look at this. This is northern Summit County. Look at the shade of red right there. That was the big downburst. And again, it occurred over about a five minute span. Uh, the winds went from literally 20 miles an hour to more than 90 in a very short period of time. And this was the area with the most damage. Again, circled in yellow. Nothing confirmed yet from the National Weather Service. They're going to go out and they're going to survey damage today. And according to the um, meteorologist, meteorologist in charge of the Weather Service, it might take them a day or two to get a full idea of the scope and the damage. They actually look at the damage pattern and they're able to determine whether or not it was a tornado tornado or just straight line winds. Damage is damage and now some leftover drizzle. We have mostly cloudy skies. It's going to be windy all day long today with some slow improvements. Not a whole lot of sun. If we do see any breaks of sun, it would be pretty short lived late today. Temperatures remain in the middle 40s. Overnight tonight, middle upper 30s, mostly clear. Some cloud cover increasing tomorrow ahead of another system. I don't think we're going to get rained on tomorrow. We'll keep an eye on that tonight into early tomorrow morning. Temperatures on the eight day will stay consistently cold. Normal high for the state's about 56. And we're looking at middle upper 40s the rest of the week. Look at the temperature differences here from north to south. The shade of pink or light purple here on Friday would indicate temperatures aloft cold enough for lake effect. Now remember we talked about that the lake is running significantly above normal here temperature wise and so it doesn't take much to allow lake effect. We we do our, our basically our lake effect forecasts are done when we look at Celsius not Fahrenheit. It's easier to do the math and anyway when you, we do the math now there's the potential for some lake effect on Friday. Now whether or not we see uh, any accumulation is the big question. We'll know more tomorrow and Wednesday. If anything, we'll have to drop those highs on uh, Friday and Saturday down. Yes, it can snow with temperatures in the 40s, in case you're wondering. But you get the idea that there's no sign of any warmth here on this eight-day forecast. So that's kind of the way it's looking here, everybody. It's, it's cold, and it's going to stay that way for a while. As always, Fox 8 News, your official school closing station. A lot of um, um, schools close. Power outages, thousands of people without power mm -hmm. all over the place. It's been like four years since the last time Cuyahoga County was under a tornado warning. Wow. Um, and when you look back in the last like 30 years, it's only happened six times. So mm -hmm. we do get severe weather in November, yeah. but to get it of the extent that we saw yesterday it hasn't happened in years. Wow. Is intense. it because of the more urban environment with the buildings and stuff? Um, yes and no. Yeah. That's kind of a myth because a lot of people think, well, we're in the city. We can't right. get a tornado. Um, I remember Salt Lake City was hit with a tornado about 15 years ago in the city. Um, but that's probably um, uh, that's probably part of it. Yeah. Uh, the lake might influence that a little mm -hmm. bit, too. So you'd have to look at all the counties to see if there's a trend. But right. we were just looking at Cuyahoga County because, you know, there's just so many people that live here compared right. to the counties around us. Yeah. All right. Scott, Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Happening today, former Congressman Anthony Weiner will begin serving his prison sentence. He will. So coming up here, what he's also required to do and how long he'll be behind bars. Monumental marathon finish. I'm going to tell you about this woman that won the New York City Marathon and why she's really celebrating this morning. What an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Also, we're keeping an eye on beautiful Akron this morning. This photo was snapped by Chris Zoller from Barberton, and you're looking at the sunset over his yard. That's gorgeous. If you're in the Akron or Canton area, please feel free to send us your photos like Chris did. Go to fox8.com, click on contest. You just might see yours right here on Fox 8 News at 9 a.m. We'll be right back. Will a power outage leave your basement flooded or spoil food in your freezer? Hi, I'm Don Webster. Do what I did and call Shep Electric today, a family-owned company, and get a Generac automatic standby generator. Call Shep Electric or go to generatorpros.com. 
You shop around. Do your research. Find the best fit. Why not do the same for your prescription drug plan? At SilverScript, we're experts in Medicare Part D, and 5 million people just like you trust us every day. With no deductible and lower monthly premiums, we could help you save money and get better coverage on thousands of prescriptions. So take a closer look at SilverScript. We think you'll like what you see. From our laser measured floor liners, Bump Step XL, No Drill Mud Flaps, and Tech Liner for your bed and tailgate, your truck is ready for the game. Take your tailgate to the next level with complete vehicle protection from WeatherTech. Check out our full line of premium automotive accessories at WeatherTech.com. WeatherTech, made right in America. It's pure greed. Big drug companies spent over $62 million opposing issue two. $62 million, a record amount. Greedy drug companies rip off families who struggle to afford life-saving medicine and are using those millions to buy your vote so they can continue their extortion. Drug companies are not on your side, so why would you side with them? Tell big drug companies Ohio isn't for sale. Vote yes on issue two. We all know the S word is coming. No one likes to think about starting a cold car on a brisk morning. Well, a remote start from Summit Sound can help, starting at just 179 installed. Before the white stuff arrives, click summitsound.net. Wendy's new chicken tenders are perfectly crispy and tender. And with a new side of sauce and sauce, they're even better. So now the question is... To dip or not to dip? For a limited time, try the new chicken tenders with fries and a drink for just $5. Only at Wendy's. Is someone dependent on medical equipment in your home? Losing power could be devastating. Hi, I'm Don Webster. Do what I did and get a Generac automatic standby generator from Chef Electric today. A family-owned company. Call now or go to generatorpros.com. Fox 8 News is brought to you by Sunnyside Chevy in Illyria. Suspect in that shooting that killed three people at a Walmart. Expected to be formally charged in court today. Authorities say 47-year-old Scott Ostrom walked into this Colorado Walmart last Wednesday and just began randomly shooting. He was taken into custody after a 14-hour manhunt. He's facing three first-degree murder charges. And prosecutors say there should be more charges against him, including attempted murder because of the dozens of people that were inside the store that bullets were flying past. If convicted, Ostrom could face the death penalty. President Trump is in Japan this morning talking trade. He told the Japanese prime minister that he wants the two countries to have a more reciprocal relationship. However, the two sides did not see eye to eye on how to deal with North Korea's nuclear threats. President Trump and Prime Minister Abe also offered condolences to the victims of yesterday's church shooting in Texas. However, the White House says the president's five country trip will not be cut short. Next, he heads to South Korea. Former Congressman Anthony Weiner scheduled to start serving his 21 month prison sentence today after pleading guilty to sending obscene texts to a 15 year old girl last year. He's required to report to a federal medical center in Massachusetts. That'll be this morning. He's then required to register as a sex offender and receive treatment. His sentence also includes three years of supervised release. Now, his estranged wife, who was a Hillary Clinton aide, filed for divorce back in May. Well, an American woman won the New York City Marathon for the very first time in 40 years. 36-year-old Shalane Flanagan was emotional, very emotional, after crossing the finish line on Sunday. Her unofficial time was 2 hours, 26 minutes, 53 seconds. She beat the three-time defending champion Mary Katani of Kenya by a minute and one second. And Jeffrey Kamwar of Kenya won for the men's with a time of 2 hours, 10 minutes, 53 seconds. Just Congrats. incredible. She looked incredible coming through the finish line, Looks too. Looks like she's like, oh, I'm, just, I'm finishing up the marathon, she did. no problem. She did. Incredible. That's Congratulations great. to anyone who, who, who was in that race. Mm -hmm. right? Really incredible. That was on, on TV. They showed the whole thing. It was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Coming up, changes coming to Twitter. Yeah, find out what's going to be done after President Trump's account got hacked. And from storm damage to power outages, live coverage of, from all across Northeast Ohio as crews and homeowners begin now the cleanup process. Hey, Scott. Hi, Steph. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's almost 930 and not much of a warm up here the rest of the week. Probably the coldest week we've had in months and months. Will we see snow this week after we're cleaning up from severe weather? Hard to talk about. We'll check it out when we come back. 
So this is a uh, obviously a tree that went right through the house. This is Maple Grove Drive in Twinsburg. Yeah, just incredible here. The owner says this is the third time in 16 years that a tree has fallen hmm. on their house. Look at that. Most of the damage is to the garage, some damage to the front of the home, but uh, it missed, we're told, the daughter's bedroom by just a wow. couple of feet. But we're seeing a lot of these huge trees down on homes from last night's storms. There was so much rain, too. It just, you know, allowed that uh, ground to soften. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those trees fell. Thousands of people in northeast Ohio still have no power this morning. Could be days before they get it back. Severe storms rolled through the area yesterday afternoon. All right, we have several school closings to share with you, too. And we begin our team coverage right now with Stacy Fry, who is out west in LaGrange. Hey, Stace. Good morning. Our power crews have been out and about all night, but we've definitely seen them this morning trying to uh, pick up those lines, get everybody stored as much as possible here in LaGrange. Uh, practically everyone was without power last night and still have, many of them remain that way. A lot of damage here to these businesses just off Town Square. We've been showing you the hardware store here where the roof was just lifted right off of it, landed across the street. A lot of people wondering whether those tornado warnings turn out to be any real tornadoes. Yeah, there it is. Fox 8 viewers sent in video of what appears to be a funnel cloud forming to the west of us. That was in Erie County. Whether the winds gain that kind of strength, we don't know yet. A weather station to the east in Grafton recorded an 86 mile an hour wind gust just before 6 o'clock last night. Left lots of damage here. That was pretty bad. Uh, it came in, got dark, and the wind, you know, it was. we just heard trees snapping in the backyard. And I've got probably four trees or five, six trees even down in the backyard. A uh, big tree branch went through the windshield of my brand new truck. Yeah, and you know, while that stinks, everybody stayed safe. We don't have any reports of any injuries. Just a lot of people stopping by to tell me about the damage in their yards or what they've seen on their streets and all the power poles that are tipped over. So as Scott's been saying, we'll find out from the National Weather Service whether this was actually a tornado. But to the people cleaning up the damage, they don't care what you call right. it. They just know Yo, it's a mess. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Stace. Appreciate it. And this morning we are getting our first look, too, now at the damage on the east side as well. Jessica Dill's out there in Bainbridge uh, where they're dealing with road closures, down trees, some huge, huge trees as well. Jessica, good morning. Good morning. A good sign is that I can't hear you because I can tell you that they're working hard here to get these trees cleared away. I was just talking to them too. They're telling me that I'm on the border of Auburn and Bainbridge. That's good to know. This is definitely a hard hit area out here in Geauga County. As you can see, this is trees lining the road here. Neighbors tell me that around 6, 630 yesterday, all of a sudden their houses started to shake. They heard some big noises everybody just ran to the basement for sure they went right down and that's when they woke up they came i'm sorry when they came back upstairs they looked outside and they saw that their neighborhood was just completely different from what it was earlier in other words you're looking at all these wide spaces these wide spaces were not here they were filled with trees the people that live in these homes tell me that they didn't even know what their neighbor's houses looked like because you couldn't really see them but now these trees are just down and fortunately, nobody has any reports of any injuries. Some of the houses on the road, I know the people did have to be removed by the fire department. They said that their houses aren't livable anymore because some of the trees went through the roof. But definitely, this Wood Acre Trail that I'm on right now, one of the hardest hit areas, and Geauga County Sheriff's Office just said, described it as utter devastation. Thousands without power. Some of them won't be able to have power until about Wednesday. But as I'm sure you can hear as I scream over, they are working to get these trees cleared. And Todd Steph, I will tell you too, this whole road that you're looking at, this was covered. They were saying, they said when they came out yesterday, this was just covered with trees. And then they worked through the night to kind of clear the road to let people go through there. Yeah, that's been the problem in a lot of neighborhoods. People can't get by, so that is at least a sign of progress out there. Mm -hmm. Jessica, we thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll have more from you later today. Thanks, Jess. We do want to remind you, too, we're going to have live updates and the latest coverage as our team coverage continues this morning and into the afternoon of the aftermath of the severe storms. Stay with Fox 8 on air and online, fox8.com. Plus, don't forget our app as well. Well, they are the most dangerous places to drive in Northeast Ohio. He started following me. So I think, and I'm thinking, okay, I, I might be in trouble here. So I started picking up my pace. She picked up her pace. Tonight on Fox 8 News at 10, the locations and the times of day where you were most likely to become a victim. From carjackings to theft, survivors share their close calls. 
and experts give their safety tips. Driving Danger tonight on Fox 8 News at 10. And up next, it's one of the hottest movies getting ready to hit theaters. Coco focuses on the importance of family, honoring your ancestors, and following your dreams. Up next, Christian Hoffman, the man bringing those characters to life, joins us live in studio to show it us how it all works. Time now for the Facebook friend for life. This is Michael Bryan from Ravenna. He went to Facebook, found Fox 8 News, and clicked like. Michael, how you doing? Have a great day. We hope you will do the same. Steph and I will be right back. The Facebook friend for life, brought to you by Paramount Advantage Medicaid. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't or make you feel less than. Because you're more than how much you make. You're a person determined to give yourself and your family happy, healthy lives. With Paramount Advantage Medicaid, you don't have to choose between a prescription or groceries for the week. And thanks to our vision coverage, your kids will see things in a whole new light. All you need is a little advantage. Visit ParamountAdvantage.org. A real meal for a real deal. Steak and Shake's original double and cheese steak burger and a side of fries for under four bucks. Or get one with bacon, guacamole, or a farm fresh egg. They're all under four bucks. That's a real meal for a real deal. Only at Steak and Shake. Come into Steak and Shake for hand dipped milkshakes. Better yet, come into Steak and Shake for hand dipped holiday milkshakes at half price during half price happy hour. Weekdays now 2 to 5 at Steak and Shake. It's pure greed. Big drug companies spent over $62 million opposing issue two. $62 million, a record amount. Greedy drug companies rip off families who struggle to afford life-saving medicine and are using those millions to buy your vote so they can continue their extortion. Drug companies are not on your side, so why would you side with them? Tell big drug companies Ohio isn't for sale. Vote yes on issue two. We're spotlighting local businesses and organizations with one goal, helping others. Watch New Day Cleveland's Passion and Purpose Special to see how you can help. That's all new today at 10. Hi, Ted Arslanian. My family started the carpet cleaning business in 1959. We're here to stay. We appreciate your business yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call me. I'll make your house look brand new. Arslanian Brothers. The name you can try. In all of Cleveland, there's no place like Wicked. So if you can find me, look to the western sky. Wicked, the untold true story of the Witches of Oz, flies back to Playhouse Square November 8th through December 3rd for four weeks only. Don't miss the show the New York Times calls Broadway's biggest blockbuster. Visit PlayhouseSquare.org to get Wicked. Hi, Ted Arslanian. My family started the carpet cleaning business in 1959. We're here to stay. We appreciate your business yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Call me. I'll make your house look brand new. Arslanian Brothers. The name you can try. The Northern Ohio Honda Dealers Giving Tree. Here at Fox 8, November 22nd. Great, great grandfather. None of them understand me. I'm supposed to play music. Welcome back. So last night, Disney Pixar's Coco just received the Hollywood Animation Award even before the movie hits theaters. And one man behind the film, Disney artist and character supervisor Christian Hoffman, is in Cleveland today. First of all, congratulations on the award. Oh, thank you. That's great. That's Which great. Is. You didn't even know about it. We're, just, we're informing you of that. So. Yeah, I was flying out when, when it happened, so yeah. I, I just found out. So That's congrats. Really uh, a lot of work that goes into putting this movie together. Now, you do, you do character rigging. Uh, a little bit so, of that as well? So, yeah, so I was the character supervisor, so uh, there are a bunch of teams that I oversee. Yeah. Uh, so the first team that I oversee uh, is the character modeling and rigging team. So what we do is we take uh, sculptures or drawings from the art department mm -hmm. and we uh, translate it translate that into geometry in the computer. Oh, cool. uh, and then we also have to put the controls in to make the characters move. We got a couple so of examples do, so yeah. we can see why. You can kind of describe what this, what we're looking at. Sure. So uh, what we have here, uh, we have two loops. Uh, this is Miguel, our main character, and Dante. 
And uh, one of the interesting things about Dante is that he's a Xolo dog, which is the national dog of Mexico. Oh. Mm. Uh, and this breed also happens to be hairless. So oh. uh, what this loop is showing is uh, on the top loop, uh, it's, the, it's the animation. Uh, so all of the movement there is just what we get through animation. Um, and because we don't have hair on the character yeah. to simulate, uh, the bottom loop is showing that we're actually simulating the skin on the character. Oh, so okay. How long does something like that take? Like uh, that scene right there? To, to animate? Yeah. Uh, something like this is probably uh, a week or so. Okay. And then to make a movie, to make a movie the size of Coco, mm -hmm. how long would that take in, in, in the works? So uh, the, the movie itself, um, our, our movies tend to take anywhere from four to seven years to make total. No kidding. Uh, but a lot of that time up front is just working out the story and trying to figure out what yeah. the character sure. is and what, trying to figure out what the what world we're living in. Uh, once we go into full production, which is when I come on, uh, it typically ends up taking around two years. Mm. I, I would imagine that computers and the and advancement with, with technology has just helped immensely. Uh, yeah, so it, the, the computers are getting faster all the time, um, but what that means is that we actually can make our characters more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though the computers are getting better, we end up always eating those gains and just making our characters better um, and more lifelike and, sure. and throwing, throwing more at it. So uh, surprisingly, it, it tends to sort of take the same amount of time, even though things are no getting kidding. faster, just because we're trying to make it look better. So much more. Got into a nice uh, Northeast Ohio connection, too. Lee Unkrich is uh, from Chagrin Falls, the yes. director of the movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Lee, yeah, Lee grew up. Uh, in, in Ohio, um, and I've, I was fortunate enough to work with him on this film, and I worked with him on Toy Story 3 as well. Oh, really? Oh, no yes. kidding. What other uh, stuff have you worked on that people would uh, So I've been at Pixar a long time. Yeah. Uh, I've been there for over 21 years. Wow. So You've seen everything there. <laughs> the first movie I worked on was A Bug's Life. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also worked on Monsters, Inc., uh, Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3, Monsters University, uh, the Incredibles, Ratatouille. Wow. Oh my goodness, some of our favorites. Yes. Did you always know this was something that you wanted to do? I know our weather guy, Dick Goddard here, was always into drawing and yeah. animation and that and went to school for that. Was mm -hmm. that something that you always wanted so to do as a kid? Were you always When, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, oh my. <laughs> Who didn't? And, right? <laughs> But uh, I ended up uh, teaching myself how to program computers um, when I was uh, uh, early teen. Mm -hmm. So I knew that computers uh, was where I wanted to go. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't until I was in college and Toy Story came out um, that I had even realized that computer graph like computer animated movies were an option. Yeah. Uh, so I was really inspired um, and I was taking computer graphics courses at the time when Toy Story came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get hired out of uh, directly out of school into How Pixar. Nice. Wow. Boy, that's that's incredible. That's You've had a, just an amazing career. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Sure. Congratulations on the award again. Yes. Now right, you know. You. And of course the movie comes out in just a couple of weeks. Uh, November 22nd. Just in time for Thanksgiving. Yes. Which it is Thanksgiving Day, isn't it? Is that Thanksgiving Day? Or maybe the Wednesday maybe before, but yeah. it's right around that time yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we appreciate you being here, Christian. Sure. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Good you. luck with the film. Coming up, Twitter's making some changes. Yes, find out about new measures meant to add extra security now to your accounts. You've seen babies in high chairs? What about dogs? It's a daily routine for this one family. Plus, we're showing off your kids' artwork in today's Fox 8 Kids Art Gallery. Check out this one. That's pretty good, right? Ten-year-old okay. Nicholas drew this of the Little Mermaid oh. and made it for his mom because she loves it. She likes, loves Ariel and her sister. So what do you think? Pretty good, right? Sure. See the experts in here saying, <laughs> Nicholas, great job. Keep it up. Welcome back to Fox 8 News in the morning. Uh, we've got you covered on... Uh, our crews out and about covering the storm damage today all over our area. Scott Sable talking about it too all this morning. Right now we uh, hope you have a lot of folks without power too mm -hmm. today. So we are keeping you updated on what's happening there as crews trying to work very hard to get everyone back on. And uh, again, we thank you for being with us today. All right, so Twitter adding some extra security now after a worker disabled President Trump's account for more than 10 minutes last week. The social media company initially blamed the incident Thursday night on human error before admitting an outgoing customer support employee was to blame for that. Twitter says it has now implemented safeguards to prevent this from happening again, but did not expand on what those measures are. You've seen babies in high chairs, of course, all the time. What about dogs? So this is Tink, and she has actually a condition called mega esophagus. 
So when she eats in the natural dog position, the food and water uh, don't go down to her stomach. Mm. When she eats upright, like this all, in the high chair, gravity does the work, and her owners do have to burp her after eating. Yeah, they say it's a lot of work. It's like taking care of a baby, but they say it's obviously it's well worth it. My brother's dog, Bear, had it for years. My brother really? built him the high chair and would feed him morsel by morsel and have to spoon water Just him like, like that. that. And we, they called it the bear chair. Oh. Um, but he was, and it, my brother extended his life many, many mm. years because of that, mm. having, uh, having bear in that chair. So, and it's common. I have friends in this area that have that really? issue too. Yeah, wow. more common than you would think. All right, give me a break. Talking about Kit Kat. All right, Kit Kat has a, created a new monthly creation. Check it out. Their gourmet birthstone chocolates. Oh, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Nice. They range in different colors, corresponding oh, to its birthstone. Currently, the chocolates are only on sale in Japan. And so far, no word on when they will hit shelves here in the U.S. So, I would take any color because they all look amazing, yeah. right? I like it. Oh, yeah. You know what? Why don't you get real, sissy? It's just your excuse to have some more chocolate. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It Pretty is. Much. I like the, the white Truth chocolate ones, too. The white those chocolate Kit Kats, yeah. those are really good. Because you like chocolate. I like anything. Yeah, anything chocolate. Any excuse. Yes. So Christian left us the uh, the characters from the movie. Oh, very cool. Ernesto and Miguel. Ah, from the, so we can put the those new Disney pod. movie. Yeah, so yeah. We can have those. They'll be podtastic. Yes, they will be. Okay, Todd, now yes. you're in your Van Ace Muller. True. Very talented man. Hermione. God bless you. Piano. Yeah. Vocals. Yep. Yeah. Uh, trumpet. Yep. Yeah. Get this. Yeah. But can you play the scissors? I've never even thought See about that? playing the uh, scissors. Uh, uh, check it out, web video. So that's okay. Oasis, right? Yeah, that's okay. Noel Gallagher. Yeah. Uh, the guitarist from Race had somebody playing scissors while performing on a BBC with his uh, band, Noel Gallagher's <laughs> Flying Birds. No words on how she got the gig or what the what impact it made on the song. But there you go. All right, so I'm going to give you the back beat. You ready? All right. I mean, I get it. It's like a little percussion yes. thing, but just don't it's so weird just to see somebody just standing there. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm playing my scissors. Yes. <laughs> 18 years of, of musical school. Never had, never had one lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Who would have thought? Yeah, who would have thought it? All right. Scotty, you're out there doing weather. Have you ever played scissors, Scott? Because yeah, no. you're a drummer. We're both drummers. Does it, no. Doesn't Neil Parrott have a uh, scissors in his kit somewhere? <laughs> yeah, he does. He might have something there. Yeah, it might be like triggered with the foot pedal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. You know. <laughs> do you, do you, now, do you like graduate a hi -hat. like in three years to like hedge clippers? <laughs> yeah, right. Or do you kind of go Keep it's like, up. It's like the bass, like the bass drum <laughs> right. is the hedge clippers, and you come up here for the hi hat. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what's happening. It's cold out here. It's 45 degrees. It is windy and it is not rainy anymore. All right, the cleanup continues from all the massive damage from the uh, severe weather yesterday. Again, no confirmed tornadoes. Uh, more than likely, the majority of this was straight line wind. Damage is damage. Uh, again, the, the winds were pretty excessive. We went from like 20 to 30 mile per hour winds to with that downburst. Uh, between North Royalton and Independence and Brecksville to winds. I checked Doppler radar winds of almost 95 miles an hour yesterday, giving an idea of how strong these, the system was. But now, boy, it's cold. It stays this way. Just some drizzle off the lake. It's windy, and we are going to keep this thing going here the rest of the day with winds coming in off the lake and not much improvement with temperatures. Again, we're going to stay below normal the rest of the week. There's the last cold front. We'll have one more system tomorrow, but at this point, again, you kind of get the general 
general idea. A lot of school closings this morning, power outages, uh, temperatures will be in the middle and upper 40s. North wind gusting at around 25 miles an hour will die down somewhat tonight. Middle upper 30s, some clearing, and I think we'll see some breaks of sun early tomorrow, giving way to mostly cloudy skies late with high temps tomorrow, generally in the middle and upper 40s. All right, look at the eight day, give you uh, some, some time to digest this before we finish out the show as the temperatures are going below normal. Now look at this right here, right there. That amount of cold air, that bright shade of pink would indicate temperatures that are cold enough for lake effect snow. Now, of course, as you well already know, if you're from here, it's not just cold air that triggers lake effect. There's about half a dozen different things that need to come into alignment for that. Uh, well, we have a couple of them, and right now, I think, if anything, Friday, we'll have to lower those daytime highs significantly. But notice, pretty nice dry stretch from late today, for the most part, through the first half of the weekend. Temperatures still running about seven to eight degrees below normal and really not a whole lot of warmth here. But again, shouldn't be a big surprise this week. We had it in our outlook last week and hopefully we can kind of shift things around next week as we are looking at, uh, I think, a brief warm up by then. So anyway, the uh, temperature is going nowhere. We mentioned the uh, National Weather Service is going to go out and they're going to survey damage today and we will know more whether or not this damage was from tornadoes or otherwise. More Fox 8 News this morning. Oh, wait. Fox 8 News is always your official school closing station. Now we'll head to break and finish out the show when we come back.